what's up guys this is hot diet 7 and rct gaming uh bringing you another video and this time around uh the second in the mini series that i intended to do about emulation in 2019 you know what's good today the first one basically covered uh psp emulation that one is a, a complete uh amazing software that's very complete in its features and the way that it does everything the way that um it provides you the options and stuff for you to tweak and, and and do stuff of course they had many years to work on that and of course they diverse into different platforms so they needed to come up with solutions that allowed them to work with very little resources not that the PSP technology was impossible to emulate, but when you compare the PSP technology in terms of what you need in terms of brute strength, power to emulate compared to something like GameCube on the level of GameCube and Wii and um, Wii U, which I'm going to be covering basically in the next few videos. Today we're going to start with Dolphin. And Dolphin covers GameCube and Wii emulators, and oh my god, what an emulator this is. Um, the reason why I'm stoked about doing this is because this emulator, I have been following it since its very beginnings back in the day, and I saw the potential. I saw like all the things that they, all the people that come together to work on this project and i'm amazed how far it, it went how far it took the whole ride i mean they even finalized doing most of the core stuff a while back a few years back but they decided to keep the project alive somehow by adding more and more features i have not seen a more complete emulator than this emulator right here in terms of let's say there are other emulators or other let's say um uh, front ends that include various emulators to emulate more you know consoles and stuff like that this one only um they only work with gamecube and wii titles however where it becomes like amazingly wide the options that they that they offer is in terms of the features like they go as far as you know options for you to con um, connect real controllers how to emulate those controllers if you know you need a function that you had on the original console you can bet your butt that it's already in there and if not it's soon to come they went as far as doing kind of like a fork in the roads where some of them you know the main group would stay doing the 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 main emulator and developing it and then there would be these teams that would go on and these forks to appeal to another sector like for example when it came around the dolphin version that would do the arcade the sega arcades the triforce i still have that version with me and i have almost oh my god it, probably over 25 different versions of dolphin and I keep them around because sometimes, you know, there are games that work better with some iterations or there are games that work incredibly well with a specific version, yet it doesn't run other games as well. So I just keep it around for certain games. But enough of that because I'm getting a little bit too ahead of myself here and going too much into like the nitty gritty. But basically, today with this video, what I want is to show you guys um how the, the the emulator stands up today you know 2019 how how good is it is it any you know point of running these emulators anymore and I, I i say yes i think that if you had the original hardware and you enjoyed it so much let's say you got it on launch day and you have seen how the the console grew during this lifespan why not enjoy it after lifespan even though you don't you could have the original hardware but emulators like these like um the dolphin one for example they go far and beyond just giving you that simple experience of playing the game they go far beyond because they allow you to play the game to show the game in a more upgraded resolution with more features stuff that the original console uh, might not have so that's one of the benefits of playing it if you have of course a computer that could run it now 
before, way back, it used to be that you couldn't because you would need to have like the latest and greatest graphics cards and CPUs in order to run even the most simple games not running at perfect speed. But as time goes by and as an emulator matures, all of those features are streamlined using less and less resources. That's the whole point. You know, that's part of the puzzle. How can I run these amazing titles better, as good, and maybe better than the original console? And how can I offer these options? That's one of the many questions that I bet the developers of the emulator have to ask themselves all the time. And I know a lot of people out there like to judge and like to think, you know, associate all oh, the whole emulation with piracy and stuff like that. But I'm, I'm sorry to say for you guys who are watching and, and saying, well, you know, the piracy, this and that, that's not the case anymore. Not necessarily so. Why? Because if you go and you do a little bit of research on emulation, especially the more modern emulation, you're going to find out that in contrast to how it was years back where the only option was downloading a ROM or downloading an ISO or something like that, the same, the same people who dedicate time to emulation, they dedicate them time, their, their time to managing a way to find a workaround so you can rip your own image from the original game. And this has been a way to go about uh, getting these games in order to play them. So I don't, even though as much as I love emulation uh, from way back, it's still a part of me, it's still a part of my gaming side, I, I never would condone, you know, downloading tons and tons of, of, you know, illegal games and stuff like that. So there's always an option, guys. If you want to do it, you have a choice. You can either go into the whole deal of having, it's tough to set up, I have to admit, and I can tell you I had a really hard time, especially with the Wii. Um, back in the day when I used to do a lot of hacking on the Wii and, and just trying to get those images into the SD card and move them. It was a really, it was a straining process, but it was worth it. In the end, I had enough games that I could enjoy in my emulator. And right now, I don't have the Wii with me, and yet I am able to play the games and uh, that's something that's something pretty cool but enough of that I've taken uh, enough time that's not where what we're talking about today tonight we're talking about the dolphin emulator so let's go over there and enjoy it right away hey guys, here we are uh, we're gonna be doing the dolphin one uh, I have here already ready for you guys this is the latest as far as I can tell the latest version which is 5.09890 now I have gone through a whole bunch of configurations and stuff everything from the graphics right now I'm going to be using 1440p just because since I'm recording at the same time that I'm running this I'm kind of asking a lot I, I did I was able to get away with recording with Relive in order to save some of the CPU power that's really needed for emulators, particularly the ones that deal with GameCube, all the Nintendo stuff, GameCube, Wii, and Wii U, which is going to be another video. But in this case for the Dolphin, I'm going to start out with 1440p, already tested it, and it was stable. That being said, guys, it's not going to be completely perfect unless I died it down probably to 1080p or you know less than that bear in mind this is a lot more than what the, the output of the GameCube was that and of course the fact that I'm using the GameCube controller that I mentioned was uh, a gift from Glowing Rice Glowing Rice thanks again because this is amazing playing Star Wars and playing the GameCube games with this controller makes all the difference but enough of that another thing that I might need to change hopefully I won't have to is the widescreen hack because I want to show you guys how it looks in a widescreen format but if 
it starts creeping up, uh, like, you know, problems, issues, or whatever, slow down, I might have to disactivate this. Because it does get in the way sometimes with uh, certain games. But I'm going to leave it as is for now, just so you know, check. Now, of course, this is not going to be a boring video of me showing you all the features because there are so many for us to mess around with. But basically, the more important stuff while setting up after you get the games, of course, I leave up to you the method of choice if you're going to go the dark route and download or if you're gonna go the more difficult let's say difficult way which is the way that I I got most of these which are by basically um, ripping them using a special software that is made homebrew software that is made it's out there if you want to know more go check it out go search it I won't leave links or anything like that but the point is that you are able to um, grab these images and be able to play them they can be as GCM files or in ISO it all depends which method you're gonna go now once you have the games and you've configured all the paths and stuff like where everything goes or whatever <clears throat> the most important part here aside from the graphics is the controllers of course the input this is how or through here is how I'm able to configure this controller because I can also use an Xbox One controller that I have right here but for the purposes of this video I'm going to be using this one this section covers the GameCube controllers and this the Wii remotes for the Wii titles of course if you go into configure a window like this is going to open up and you're going to be able to either load profiles from a list that you already have pre-made or you're just going to create one in which case you just go here write a name and then you choose which controller you want to use in this case the GameCube controller appears as USB uh, generic the export or yeah the export zero is alluding to the Xbox One controller that I have in and you can see I already pre-assigned all the buttons to see that or to show you guys that it's actually working I'm gonna move the, uh, the joystick here you can see it's moving and then the C stick is also moving so yeah and then the analogs are already programmed in there so yeah basically that is it after that after you have this configured bear in mind if you're gonna play a Wii title and you have a standard controller a GameCube one already there you need to disable it in order for it to um, register the ones that you have for the Wii I'm not gonna go into the Wii setup because that in itself is a lot to take in if you really want something really detailed really minute about how to go around this please leave a comment down below I won't do it otherwise now <clears throat> graphics wise it's pretty easy to set up even though it seems daunting it's simple you choose what backend you want to use in this case I'm using Vulcan because that's where basically most of their development time has gone into as of late before it used to be between you know OpenGL or the di direct uh, 3d 11 um, before way back it was nine and so on and so forth but now what you never want to do is go with software renderer that's that, that's no good Vulcan which is the more advanced one is the one that I'm gonna be using and like I said I have the aspect ratio to use a widescreen hack to force 619 but you can leave it auto and it works just fine enhancements have a number this is going to be the internal resolution this is what the GameCube brain inside the emulator is gonna be throwing those graphics at right now I have it set to 1440p but it can go all the way up to 5k in resolution if you have the power for that go ahead and do it no anti-aliasing because it's not really needed for this resolution in my opinion filtering all the way up and some of the stuff you know some of the other stuff for to make the graphics looks um, pretty nice 
some hacks but most of it you just leave the same in my case I also marked load custom textures because I have something there some uh, custom textures uh, texture packs that I got for Zelda and for uh, Star Wars uh, Rogue Leader which you're gonna see in a minute I'm gonna start off with that one because a little nervous that running at 1440p it won't run perfect bear in mind before I click on the first game for those of you who are just waiting to see if this goes slower or if it crashes and stuff like that well you know what it could happen regardless of the power that you have you have to understand this is an emulator this is not a finished product it's not a sold product so of course you're gonna have some glitches here and there that's the whole point of emulation to go through these to make it as as uh, you know not perfect but as close as possible to the system that is emulating and in this case enhance it way above what the system could do at the time okay disclaimer and now I'm ready to go hopefully now it has the widescreen hack I don't know if that's gonna get in the way I'm gonna go into full screen and you're gonna see a little difference if it doesn't stutter or go crazy batshit or whatever you're gonna see that the title screen changed to reflect the loaded um, yeah this part I always skip because it's always slow there's a whole lot of stuff going on there and here you have it guys rogue leader but with HD textures as you can see by that HD right there I did a video a long time back about this but the quality wasn't very good so let's go in here with a file that I had already done with some question marks there since I'm just gonna go through this once and the Death Star is done to death no pun intended the rebel supply convoy is moving from the I should do this one to show you guys how the how the planet the textures the look it looks way, amazing to not gonna play the actually play it until the end I'm just gonna show you guys real quick and I might have to skip through some of the stuff here because as you can tell in the background there's a little bit of slowdown that the frames per second counter is up here in the top corner so you can see that as well so here we go I know I'm almost sure there's gonna be slowdown but look even the, the cinematics have all the textures that are loading look at that look at that beautiful planet in the background and that nebula. The all the textures from the ships the and stuff are this changed the we'll to the ones in the pack we can make the jump back into hyperspace. and in widescreen it looks amazing and look, here we are guys approaching from all directions oh Wish my god it. it's holding up really well I, copy, Witch. I know it's gonna freak out through. once I bring up the the HUD. Yep, I know it. There are some ships right here. But the triggers are working perfectly. There is going to be some artifacts and some weird sh shit going on because it's uh, forcing it to be in the widescreen. The transports are drawing heavy fire. Engage those fighters. You got it, Luke. They're all over us. I just want to go there. I want to go to that planet. Ah! Yeah, they're getting killed. We've lost a transport. You're going to lose a lot more. Okay, let's go there. Heading over there, don't be whining so much. We're getting hit hard. No 
Oh shit. <laughs> I'm so mad. That's the thing, I need to bring this up because I can't see them. Now if you want me to cover these, to be honest guys, let's get out of here. If you want me to cover individually any of these GameCube games, please let me know. I will go back into retrospectives, which I will cover more games and stuff. But this is more to show off, at least at the present the day, how good these uh, emulators the are running. Do a little bit of the Death Star and get out of here, because this one is kind of slowing down a bit. actually taken away from my camera as well. Oh my god, don't tell me I have to go through. Okay, I can skip it. Awesome. Just ram through it. See, the white screen does not behave very well with with this game in particular. So yeah, let's get out of here and turn off. Let's turn off the white screen hack. At least I showed to you guys how it looks with the widescreen hack uh, enabled, but for now, let's just take it out and leave it in auto. This way you get to see it the way it's meant to be seen, I guess. And just not to take too much time with the Star Wars, even though it is one of my favorite games from the GameCube. I want to make this video all about this game alone. I want to show you a couple more. Now at the very least, this is the preferred way because this way not only the texture uh, pack will work, you know, more proper, it's, you know, it's the original way, so it's going to look better. Will run better, a little bit better, I'm assuming as well. Let's go back to that one. Now you can tell everything has been covered by the texture pack because believe me, the GameCube original did not look as good as this one. Even the little icons that you see in the bottom there with the X and the uh, and the helmet and stuff, those are redone. As you can see by the red camera, <laughs> that wasn't there back then, so. It do if that doesn't give it out, I don't know what. See how the cinema, no, oh, no, no, I don't wanna go through all this. Everybody already knows the theme to Star Wars. Red 10 standing by. Red 7 standing by. But look at this. Red 6 standing by. The sequence right here with the new textures. Oh my god. Lock and attack the Beautiful. This is Red 5. I'm going in. Now this is what I'm talking about. This is how you get to, and I gotta say, it's holding up pretty well. Even though it's in the higher resolution, 1440p internal resolution, it's still handling pretty well. Let's 
see if I can make it to the trench run. Come on, hurry up. Make a comparison with this video and some others back in the day and you're going to see that lighting and that definition was not there, guys. Whoa, that was a little bit too close. Too close to comfort. Big switch. Let's close it up. Right with you, Luke. Yeah, I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna leave it right here before I make a fool out of myself. Yeah, I'm gonna close it up. All right. I'm gonna leave it right there. Okay. Next one up. Let's do. Let's do. Uh, Quick race F0. F0 is one of the tougher ones too. A bit demanding. But so, so awesome when it runs right. Hopefully, it won't screw up with a uh, higher uh, 1440p resolution. And listen to that soundtrack, man. Oh. Holy crap, this is good. So let's do a quickie here. Got all of these unlocked. But I'm going with the standard. Now this game right here is a good example of how the GameCube graphics in some titles like this one they, they just they, they don't grow old I mean you're gonna see here you just add a little bit of resolution to it and they look almost current graphics black is my let's skip the niceties it might slow down here yeah, going into the 40s but it'll pick up Yep, we'll go back to normal. There we go. Woohoo! Super duper, baby. Look at those freaking graphics. Oh yeah, baby. Boost power, boost power! Boost power. Now with the GameCube controller, courtesy of Blowing Rice. Awesome. Oh, I touched the sides there. Stretch, guys. Just amazing. And it, it held up pretty well. The full 60 frames without a hitch. Another one of the classics, of course. Should do a nice little short spin would be uh, Mario Kart. Yeah, let's do something quick with this one. Now, here at least you can tell with the video. Because this is a video, a uh, full motion video, or a cinematic. It's basically a video clip. And you can see that's the resolution it was back then. So you can see it's, it's pretty grainy. But back at the time in the original GameCube on a CRT, this looked amazing.
title screen, same deal. But when you go into the game, let's use the super tag team of Mario and Wario. Let's use that car too. Bear in mind, all the assets here are being rendered at 1440p. Which I'm surprised the intro is not either lagging or slowing down. That's good. That's a good sign. Oh, I broke down. I don't know why this game didn't get so much love as the other Mario Karts. It's one of my favorites because of the double team thing. Keep seeding my power ups. Damn you. Get out of here. Oh, princess. Little present from me. Here. Ha <laughs> ha. Big fat butt. Want some of this? Take it. Take this too. Anybody following me? Nope. I'm pretty far ahead. Chomp chomp. The hell are we? Oh crap. And it always has to be when you're almost at the finish line. Classic Mario Kart. Shoot somebody here in the back just in case. following me, which I doubt it. No. I did it. Super clean and super fun and running at the 60 frames that it's supposed to. Really, really nice. Let's see what else we can... I'll do one more before I say goodbye. In honor of Probably some of the guys that are going to be watching this. Let's do a little bit of Wrestlemania. Won't remember how to play it. Even though it was one of the, the my most played games back in the day when I had the GameCube. If only for Goldberg alone coming out of this game. That, that just did it. That just did it for me. So... Moment. This exactly. was so long ago. Careers. I feel so old. This is the culmination of Boom. everything I've ever worked for. WrestleMania is called the Grand Area of Mall, and you stand on the grandest stage of them all. I've been waiting for this my whole life. Okay. There's really that X factor in tangible. Rest in peace, my friend. Single hardcore match can't have it any other way. Let's do it in the old SummerSlam stage. Entrance on, first blood off. Because I don't remember how to play the game, so I will pick for sure. I am going to pick Goldberg because he's my favorite. Or one of my favorites, anyway. And let's have old Stone Cold. 
which is gonna be mean that it's gonna be almost impossible for me to win this match. <laughs> the old models and stuff like that but I remember the game how it was back when it came out and it wasn't as clean as this it did look good though right, let's go see Stone Cold. oh it didn't they didn't show Stone Cold crap okay one button for strikes we got counters there you go. Ooh. There you go. How about me grabbing this can over here? There you go. Let me let me grab this can. Hold on. Let me grab. Can't grab the can. God damn. Uh oh. Uh oh. Nope. 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 No. Nope. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get up. No work. Come on. There you go. Ah, I grabbed it. Oh, oh shit, he grabbed something too. No! I took it off. Dumbass. First blood, first blood. Throw that away, throw that away. I want the can. The can is much better. There you go. Oh shit. Nope, 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 nope. There you go. No! Stop it! Stop it! No! Gotcha! <laughs> no! Oh, he smacked up. Mm. Second blood. And third. And fourth. <laughs> Jackhammer, come on. Alright, so I figured out. Ooh. Here we go. Jackhammer. <laughs> and it's over, baby. Come on, count of three. Two. Yes! Two. Sorry, so cold. Just had to have my moment. Yes! What a good way to end this video. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, guys. That is going to be all for now for this uh, Dolphin kind of walkthrough. Uh, if there's any other games that you would like me to feature, please let me know, or emulators for that um, fact. Uh, yeah, I know there's a ton of other games that I could have covered, but those, these right here, I'm going to try my best to cover them in the upcoming retrospectives that I'm still working on now with uh, new tools and stuff like that is something that I'm going to be looking into to get as soon as possible out there. So I appreciate the support from you guys and I hope to see you soon. Please like and subscribe and see you guys soon. Take care.